What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be exploring one of Colorado's lesser visited parks, and that is Colorado National Monument. Colorado is known for its breathtaking views and endless number of trails in its famous Rocky Mountains. However, today we're going to be diving into Colorado's Red Rock Desert. This video will be a comprehensive travel guide, so let's dive right in. This is my top 10 hikes and places to visit in Colorado National Monument. So stay tuned for the end of this video because I'm going to be giving away a bunch of awesome gear, some prints, some camera bags, a bunch of little accessories and gear, and a brand new suitcase. So stay tuned for the end of the video to enter that. This area is located in West Colorado, just off of I-70, outside of Grand Junction and Fruita. Geographically, we're very close to Moab, Utah, which is home to Arches and Canyonlands National Parks. The landscapes here are very similar to these two parks. Colorado National Monument is a 22-mile scenic rim rock drive with plenty of overlooks and trailheads for hikes along the road. It costs $25 to enter per vehicle, or it's free if you have the annual parks pass. This video will be more compact than my usual travel guide, but throughout the video I will also be giving additional tips for visiting. And for other places in Colorado and across the country, I have top 10s, travel guides, and other videos similar to this one. But our first place on the list is Coke Ovens Hike, which is roughly a one mile round trip hike with 175 feet of elevation gain. This is one of my favorite hikes in the park with beautiful smooth rock formations and we even saw a waterfall while we were here. I'm not sure if it's always there, but it was beautiful as it flowed down the very smooth sandstone rock wall. I'd also like to mention that this top 10 list is not in any specific order or in order of how you'll drive through the park, it's just the general guide to my favorite places here. But next up is Devil's Kitchen Trail, which is definitely my number one hike in the park. It's a 1.5 mile round trip hike with 300 feet of elevation gain. Once you reach the end of the hike, you'll be surrounded by massive rock formations inside the quote unquote Devil's Kitchen. It's like a giant playground and a really fun place to explore and just climb around. When we did this trail, we started the Rim Rock Drive from the Grand Junction entrance, and then this was the very first pull off. The trailhead is only two minutes from the ranger station. The Rim Rock Drive can take as little as 45 minutes to an hour, but if you wanna hike like us and explore trails like the Devil's Kitchen, you're gonna need to budget additional time. Visiting Colorado National Monument can be done as a day trip or a weekend trip if you wanna allow enough time to hike some of these trails rather than just going to the overlooks. At number three, we have Monument Canyon Overlook, which is my favorite overlook in the park. It's right off the side of the roads. So this is probably the best view that you can get here without having to walk or hike. In the distance, you're gonna see desert buttes, freestanding rock towers, and a vast wide open view to the north, all the way to Grand Junction and beyond. I really enjoyed taking some compression photography with our 70 to 200 millimeter lens here. Next up is Book Cliffs View, a series of desert mountains, cliffs, and freestanding rock formations. Alongside Monument Canyon Overlook, this is one of my favorite viewpoints in the park. It's also right next to Window Rock, which is a very cool rock arch in the monument. It's slightly tough to see from the vantage point, but we stopped here briefly before heading over to Book Cliffs to enjoy a perfect sunset. To me, this place is like Colorado's own Monument Valley. It's hard to believe that it even is Colorado instead of somewhere in Utah or Arizona. If there's only one place you have to stop at that doesn't involve hiking, make sure it's this stop in Monument Canyon over there. At number five, we have Ute Canyon and Upper Ute Canyon Overlook. The Overlook is a great option for anyone wanting to see the view but not actually hike, but if you do want to dive a little deeper and you choose to do the Ute Canyon Trail, the hike is gonna be 4.3 miles one way with roughly 900 feet of descent. There's quite a few steep switchbacks. This is a great hike if you're visiting in the spring or summer because there's so much lush vegetation, which is really cool to see against the desert rock. It creates a pretty awesome contrast. Another fun thing here is the Overlook not far from the parking lot where you can hear your echo across the entire canyon. The wall on the opposing side of the canyon is curved so any sound waves bounce off of the wall and echo all the way back to you. It's a pretty fun stop to say the least. No. <laughs> Next up is Artist Point, another quick stop just off the side of Rim Rock Drive. Artist Point has a nice long fence at this overlook that you can walk around to get slightly different vantage points of the view. If you're driving from Grand Junction, this is when you really start to get that massive wide open canyon view with stunning rock formations in the distance as far as you can see. Here you can read some of the signs about the monument to learn about the range and color palette in the park, but in brief, the variety of colors are from the colors of the minerals and the types of lichens and chemical compounds that coat the rock's weathered surface. Number seven, we have Independence Monument View, which you guessed it, is another beautiful roadside stop. By now you've probably started to realize that Colorado National Monument is a very easy place to visit in one day, especially if you don't have any plans for hiking. Here you're gonna have phenomenal views of the canyon and the rock towers. The scale of the landscapes are just amazing. And you can see Grand Junction in the distance way past the buttes. 
Next we have Serpent's Trail, which starts just across the street from the Devil's Kitchen Trailhead on Rimrock Drive. While we hike this trail, I want to mention that while we're out exploring, it's important that everyone packs out what they pack in and follow Leave No Trace principles. Anything that you bring into the park should be leaving with you, but the Serpent's Trail will connect you with its upper trailhead on a point-to-point -point hike that's 1.7 miles one way with 770 feet of elevation gain. The trail has 20 switchbacks and it used to be called the crookedest road in the world before it was converted to a hiking trail in 1961. I will say if there's one hike that I would cut off of this list, it would be the Serpent's Trail. It's an awesome hike, but I'm only saying this in case you are on a time crunch that this is one that I would drop. Anyways, after Serpent's Trail, we're gonna be heading to Cold Shivers Point. We visited this stop about an hour before sunset, and I gotta say, it was amazing. The sun was setting in the distance to the west, just lighting up the overlook, the trees, and everything in sight. The walkway out to the overlook is very short. It's maybe 200 feet from the parking area. Some of the rock formations have complete vertical drops to the canyon below. It's a great stop for landscape photography where you can show the scale of a person versus the massive landscape. Last up but not least on this list is going to be Grand View Overlook, another great lookout in the park that's a quick and easy stop. This is relatively similar to Monument Canyon Overlook, but since it's just another roadside stop that doesn't involve hiking, it's worth stopping to enjoy the view, and this is a great place to keep an eye out for high-flying birds. That's going to wrap up this travel guide. On the channel, I also have videos on the top 10 hikes and places to visit for the state of Colorado, for Ure, Rocky Mountain National Park, and much, much more. Bree and I have been traveling for the last eight years full-time and have made dozens and dozens of travel guides. All right, so in just a sec, I'm gonna turn my camera around and show you everything that I'm giving away. But to enter this giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, comment your favorite video on the channel, and then comment what of this gear would help you the most, what would you like the most, what would benefit you the most, not something that's just gonna hang around in a closet. Comment that down below, and then on my video that gets released on New Year's Eve, December 24th, I will announce the winners. There's going to be five winners, so your odds for winning something are great. Been wanting to do this giveaway for a long time. Here is everything that I'm going to be giving away for this holiday season. We have a brand new Skyway luggage checked bag. It's about medium size. It's not a massive suitcase, but it's definitely bigger than a carry-on. Two brand new Westcott camera bags with the inserts and organizational kind of whatever they're called <laughs> in there for lenses, cameras, all that good stuff. They have been checked from Maryland to Colorado, but otherwise they are brand new. A think tank camera bag. This one just to sling over your shoulder. Very convenient if you're on a shoot. A little B&H kind of tote bag with a zipper, some stickers, two memory card cases, some camera socks from B&H, a beanie from B&H, a Westcott beanie, a live a great story poster. That thing is massive. That is awesome. Great motivation always. If you have a desktop, I do not. A Dell mouse and two of my prints framed Rainbow Mountain in Peru photo I took maybe five years ago and this is a photo of Mount Meeker from the summit of Long's Peak in Rocky Mountain National Park. All of this going to be given away. You have until December 20th to enter the giveaway. Five winners so don't forget comment down below subscribe to the channel and hopefully you can have some of this headed your way for the holiday season. Thanks for watching as always guys.